Hello, Fredverts. Give you a rundown of one of the girls that works here at Pinter Prawn. This is my Tronxy X3, um, completely modified. About the only thing that's left over from the original printer uh, would be the frame, the lead screws, the motors, motor cables, heat bed still original, and I think that's it. Everything else has pretty much been replaced. All the belts were upgraded. Pulleys have been changed out. Uh, Anti-backlash nuts. All these pieces have been reprinted. Uh, little cheap Ender 3 pull-off rubber mat. I used to uh, actually really like these. Uh, except I had a print stick to one. And when I tried to take it off, it actually ripped this coating right off of the magnetic back end. Which kind of sucked because it was right in the center so couldn't use it springs have been replaced with the uh, silicone bushings uh, electronics wise uh, no, I shouldn't do that we have an SKR 1.4 Pro uh, I've got the ESP 01 module with the ESP 3D firmware uh, TMC 2209s running in the dual Z setup so you can actually align the left and right Z um, 3D Touch, I believe the version 3 uh, Auto Level Pro, but just replaced that because my previous one was having issues. You can check out my other video on that. Uh, hot End's been replaced with a clone E3D V6. Uh, the all metal Hot End's been changed out on it. I have the Amazon double geared extruder, which everyone seems to hate, but I've had zero problems with it except for the little grub screw that holds on that gear is very very soft uh, old lighting safety cable holding my wires up so they don't get caught that it's going to get replaced with one of those key retractors let's see it is running off of a raspberry pi 3 with a raspberry cam version 1 there's a raspberry pi 3 with the little raspberry cooler works really great uh, i believe this is the x820 uh, ssd adapter uh, there's a solid state under here. Don't want to pick it up in case I lose any cables. I uh, really like this thing because, of course, it has the power that goes in. It's got a nice little power switch. I uh, got tired of my SSD cards dying on me right when I needed to print something. And comes with a nice 5 amp power supply. Uh, so that's been really good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Dual MOSFETs. One for the hot end. The other one is on the, the back. You really can't see it. Let's see custom mount that I had to design over like 15 times and the lights just turned off. Um, this is all lives inside of a cheap $100 eBay grow tent. Works really well uh, for keeping an enclosed environment. I tried one printing with ABS. This is my solution. Uh, never really succeeded with ABS. We moved on to other things. It's really nice for at night, especially when the, the original printer that I had in here, which has now been turned into a completely new printer uh, was so loud so loud with those 8-bit uh, controller and those old uh, 82 8266s no not the 8266s you know the the lowest end drivers um, I upgraded to 8266 at one point um, it was very loud of course the fans are noisy uh, it's really nice at night to be able to close the tent up and it just kinda goes away um, the filter does seem to capture a lot of the odors. Uh, I have no clue if it actually, you know, does anything with that carbon filter to capture any of the fumes from the EBS. So I'm probably destroyed my brain a little. No worse than anything I've done in my youth. You know, it's been a pretty decent printer for being upgraded $20 at a time. Um, definitely a learning experience. Uh, much better than my first. This was my second. After I had so many problems with my first printer, I just gave up and bought another hundred dollars. I actually got this on eBay during a deal for right at a hundred bucks, and it printed first time PLA absolutely fine. Um, and then I went over to uh, PETG, and all kinds of problems started. So yeah, and there we go. Of course, it's running Marlin 2.09, latest bug fix. Yeah, it's got 
LED lights here in the side. So yeah, that is the X3. So messy.